When Alfred Wagner was trying to uh, explain his continental diff theory, he talked about continents as floating on a river or an ocean of water that was underneath the continents, which caused the continents to drift away from their positions. And that was part of the reason why he was denied or why a lot of people did not believe his theory is because it seemed to be missing a decent, believable mechanism for the way the continents were moving. And until the 1940s or the middle of the 20th century, we didn't really know what this missed mechanism was. But once we started using sonars and water to find submarines and things, ships under the water, we soon realized that the shape of the bottom of the ocean was actually very intriguing. And we started finding things like sea mounts, guyots, and the mid-ocean ridge in the middle of the ocean. And as soon as people realized that there was this mid-ocean ridge in the middle of the ocean, questions were raised about what that was and what was the role of that in the Earth's system. And so oceanography research became the geological evidence that ended up proving uh, Walford Wagoner's continental drift theory. The idea of seafloor spreading, or the idea that magma rises from the, inner, from the inner core through the mantle, pushes through the crust of the earth, and eventually creates new crust that pushes the continents apart, is actually the missing mechanism that Wagner was looking for to explain how the continents can possibly drift apart. And you actually see this process shown here in the screen. In the middle there, you see the guy trying to hang for his life as the continents are drifting apart. And certainly this was the case for many animals when this first started to happen because it's actually separated animals that live in different continents, which explains why we find fossils across different continents. They, have been, they may have been dead for a long time, or they may have been actually alive in the time the continents are actually trying to separate from each other. But the way this will look like, basically, is that magma from the inner core is going to start to punch through and try to find the easiest plus spot to punch through. It will find a fault line, rise to this fault line, punch through it, and eventually melt the surface of the, of the earth and the crust, and eventually cause the crust to bend upwards like this, and when it gets thin enough, it would actually rip the crust apart. So what I want you to imagine is, the, is a piece of paper that's being stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched, bent up, bent upwards, until it eventually crack. And that's what happened to the surface of the earth. But in, when the surface of the earth cracked, magma seeped through and sealed that crack with new crust that immediately solidified. But that new crust was very flimsy and probably the thinnest part of the entire crust. So that's the easiest spot for the magma to punch through again. And so again, the magma was going to punch through that crust. Again, it creates a gap, pushes the crust apart a little more, seals the gap as it solidifies. And as the process repeats over and over again, push after push, you're going to create these fractures at the edge of, of the actual zone that's being, that's being cracked and pushed. But as new and new magma actually fits in between, you end up pushing the contents apart from each other, and then oceans will float in, flow in between, and you will get a combination of uh, uh, the continents set apart by oceanic crust. And eventually, over, over a period of millions of years or so, you will get something that looks like this. The mid-ocean ridge will still be in between. It, the, the magma will still be lifting the middle up. It will still be fracturing that middle, still pushing it apart as it tries to fit in between. And it will still be creating new crusts, which is the flimsiest of the crusts, which is the easiest way to scrack again and be pushed to the side again. And over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, you're going to create new and new bands, which will flow away from the middle, and as you are pushing it away, you're going to go further and further from the area that's being bent upwards and become flatter and flatter ground as the folds are stretched thinner and thinner and the sea floor is created. Later, the actual crack can actually shift and different pieces of the crack can be bent in different directions. So, for example, maybe this piece here moved more this way and this piece moved even faster. This piece moved a little slower. This piece moved faster. And what you get is that the actual mid-ocean ridge, not 100% aligned, but like different pieces of it shift to the side in transform boundaries. And the whole thing, though, is full of fractures, and we call that a fracture zone. And this process of seafloor spreading, of the magma rising, becoming lava as it touched the surface. By the way, that's the difference between magma and lava. Remember, magma is underground. Lava is when it reaches the, the crust. All right, and it becomes exposed to either the air or the water. And so when this level solidifies, it makes new rock, push the constant apart. It's flimsy, cracks again, lava push through, push the constant apart, solidifies, new crust. And so this process starts over and over again and ends up creating the separation between the continents. All right? Now, 
what evidence is there to support that this is actually a fact, that, that we actually have sea floor spreading? Because when you look at the Middle Ocean Ridge, all you see is a ridge. You don't actually see this happening. You can't actually uh, quantify this happening, at least not until very recently. So what evidence is there to figure out that this is actually indeed happening? Well, remember, the rift itself is evidence that something is happening here. If you look at the rift and study the rift, we did that with robotic submarines and things like that. We noticed that there's actually a large, large valley in between two large mountain ridges and that in, in that valley you have cracks in the surface of the earth where the magma is seeping through to the surface. And as it does this, it, it pushes through the surface and, and, and pushes the crust apart. Now, as you can see here, each one of these bands that you see here is one event of a crust being created. And as the crust is being created away from this region, it starts to travel more and more away from the mid-ocean ridge over a long period of time and eventually it's going to travel away from the air that's being pushed up and cracking and form the large abyss that's kind of flat especially as this stretches away also remember that you could have a transform fault where one piece is actually moving to the side because in relationship to the other piece because of the way the magma is moving underneath that that fault line but that overall, you get in the middle of the entire ocean basin a pattern of cracks, one next to each other, not necessarily lined up with each other, but one next to each other across the entire middle of the ocean. And that's what's actually spreading the ocean. And this is the perfect example of a divergent boundary. When we talk about this again, remember this picture. It's a good picture to study and see how a divergent boundary looks like. Remember that this is happening because the lava is flow flowing, magma is flowing away from this central location, uh, dragging the asthenosphere to the sides this way, away from each other, which actually is causing the crust to rip apart and just go crack, you know? So basically the crust is just stretching, stretching, stretching until it goes crack, and it, it cuts in half, and little by little it's spread in between. Now the rift itself logistically makes sense, but that's not enough evidence. So let's talk about what, how we figured out that the rift was actually the center on our next video.